around from Motion BFX. In this video, I will show you with three different examples how to create the tilt shift effect in Final Cut Pro 10 in less than two minutes using MFM look from Motion VFX. The tilt shift effect is used when you want to fake miniatures with your different clips. There are two ways to create tilt shift effect. First, during the shooting using tilt shift lenses, very good result, but very expensive also. Or you can build the tilt shift effect in post-production. In post-production, you can reproduce the tilt shift effect by reducing the desktop feel of the shot letting a small sharp area. You will see by using MFM look, the all-in-one solution to create cinematographic looks, that it will be very easy and very fast to create this kind of effect. To add MFM look to my shot, I will open the effects library. Then I go to MFM look where I've got the default effects and the presets, 60 presets to be accurate. To apply the effect, you can double click on it or drag and drop the effect on the shot. Now I can close the effects library. With this first shot, I can see that the image is quite flat, so I will have to color correct it. And I need to find which subject I want to focus on. In this case, it's quite obvious as there is only one house and a couple of cars. I've already mentioned and film look it's the only one solution, including many features like white balance, basic adjustment, LUT, lens distortion, and many more. I can play with all these effects directly inside the viewer. There are additional parameters inside the inspector, like the convert to rec 709, which give me the possibility to add camera LUT. I've got access to many camera LUTs and I can test which one is the best for my shot. In this case, I will choose the Blackmagic 4K V1. Now I can go directly to the lens blur effect, the perfect tool to create still shift effect. I can click on the icon in order to activate the lens blur and also display all the on-screen control. By default, the shape is a circle. The inner circle defines the sharp area and the outer circle defines the blurry area. The area between these two circles will be the transition between the sharp area and the blurry area. With the on-screen control, I've got direct access to the intensity of the blur. And also I can change the aspect ratio of the shape. I can modify it from a circle to a rectangle shape. Directly inside the viewer, I can modify the position, adjust the range and the softness. Now I've got a narrow sharp area, mimicking a small depth of view. With the on-screen control, I'm limited to the amount of the intensity, the maximum value being 1. But inside the inspector, you can go beyond this limit and double this value. So I can go crazy and increase the blur value to 2. To have a better view of my effect, I can click on the icon to remove the on-screen control of the lens blur. The result is great, but I can improve the effect by adding some little retouch on my shot. And as MFilmLock is a real swift knife, I've got all I need directly inside my viewer. So I will use the levels and the basic adjustment to do some color correction. With the levels, I can increase the contrast and the exposure. With the basic adjustment, I can add saturation. This is a tip, as a saturated shot will give a better impression for faking the miniature effect. You can add also a little bit of vibrance, depending on your shot. And the last but not the least, I will always add sharpness to add more details on the object. I can reduce even more the sharp area to increase the miniature effect. To polish my effect, I will add a vignette effect. I will reduce the intensity in order to have a more subtle effect. And also, I will add a letterbox for the final touch. For the second example, I will use this shot over her neighborhood. As you can see, I've already applied the MFilm look effect on it. In this shot, I won't add camera LUT. I will just play with the levels parameters to add some exposure and contrast. Then I go directly to my lens blur effect, click on the icon to activate it, and get my on-screen control. For this shot, I will keep the circle shape, change a little bit the aspect ratio and the size in order to fit with the shape of the neighborhood. With this basic adjustment, I will increase the saturation, a little bit of vibrance, and of course I will add some sharpness in order to get more details on the roof of the houses. Then I can adjust the size of the lens blur and check if everything is okay with the camera motion. 
A nice tip also you can use to fake a miniature effect is to speed up your shot, like if it was a time lapse, for example. In this case, I won't go too crazy, I would just double the speed. Playing the clip, I see that I would like the car to be in sharp area when the car is in the middle of the shot. So I will add a keyframe position to be sure that the car will be sharp. I go to the focus mask settings, double click on it to display all the parameters. Now I've got access to the X and Y position. I position at the right place the lens blur. Then I had a keyframe on X and Y. I go to the first frame to see if in this position it's okay or not. In this case, it's quite okay. So I don't have to add more keyframe. I can check by playing the clip from start to end. Like the first example, I will increase the intensity value in the inspector beyond one. Last check to adjust the size. Then I can add some light vignette effect and a letterbox. For the third and last example, I will use a bridge shot in order to show you that you can animate the shape of the lens blur. First thing first, I will apply a M-film look to my clip. Then I will use the levels parameters to add some exposure and contrast on my shot. I will activate the lens blur effect and I will start with the overall shape. I will change the size and the rotation to fit the shape of the bridge. Again, I will push the intensity to the maximum inside the inspector. And in order to fix this position on the first frame, I will go to the focus mask setting and add keyframes on the position and the rotation. I can move to the middle of my shot to see how it works. Not so good. I will have to change the aspect ratio also. So I go back to the first frame and add a keyframe on the aspect ratio parameter. I can now adjust the position, the rotation and the aspect ratio to fit with the bridge. Then I add keyframes for all these parameters. I can check the animation. It is okay, I can go to the end of my shot and add an ending position for the lens blur. You can see that I've also modified the range of the softness parameters during my animation. So I will need to add keyframe on these two parameters. It is very easy. Going back to the first frame, add keyframes and adjust the two parameters. Then I go to the last keyframe position, add keyframe and adjust these two. So now I've got a perfect animation of my lens blur shape. I would like to polish my shot with some color correction. I can add saturation. I will add also an off-screen lens flare. Maybe I can switch to another preset like this one. As usual, a little vignette effect and a letterbox effect. But maybe I would like to add a lot for a better look, like this one, for example. One last little details I will add to this shot. I will double the speed of the shot to increase the speed of each car. Here, before and after, and film look effect. As you can see, all the features inside and film look give you infinite ways to create looks for your production. If you want more information, try the demo version, download the manual file, and get more tips and tricks. Only one address, motionvfx.com. See you there. Thank you. Bye-bye.